Tokyo. A city teeming with 37 million lives, each with a story to tell. Beneath the surface, there's a chapter veiled in mystery, waiting to be told. When you think of Japan, what comes to mind? Today, we will dive into an intriguing trend among Japanese women, a trend that might take you by surprise. Japan is one of the most unique countries on earth. The people are often praised for their politeness, respect, and work ethics. Or looking at it another way, if you and I decided to meet at any city in Japan and take a walk, we would find that the city is clean and tidy, we would find public transport running on time, and we would find some of the most advanced technology the world has ever seen. But despite the benefits, it's essential to address the cultural difference. One important distinction is that many countries, especially Japan, see the world very differently from the Western world. Take, for example, the way you look. Now, of course, I don't have a clue what you really look like, but let's suppose you are very slim and have pale skin. In many places, locals often find people with a larger build and darker skin more attractive. But in a different nation, these same traits are not the most popular. For example, in some Asian countries such as Japan, too much muscle or too many tattoos can be seen as scary by some locals. I joke around sometimes and say, you're not unattractive, you are just in the wrong country. Mm -hmm. But funny enough, there may be some truth in that. And this example goes to show the importance of how people see the world very differently. In recent years, the Japanese have had a big fight on their hands. The modern society in Japan is changing and it's changing quickly. Year after year, the birth rate in Japan continues to decline. The statistics show that the current birth rate is 7.13 births per 1,000 people. In perspective, the current birth rate for Rwanda is 29.170 births per 1,000 people. In addition to this, the aging population continues to grow. Sections of the economy continue to stagnate, and the rural population is declining. What else? Oh yes, and there are many labor market challenges. With these changing times, it's no surprise why some have given up the quest in chasing women. In Japan, there is a term, soshoku danshi, which translates to herbivore men. In this simplest definition, Herbivore men is a term used in Japan to describe young men who express little interest in getting married or being in any kind of relationship. Another term closely linked to this is the term hikikomori, which means a person who is totally withdrawn from society and seeking extreme degrees of social isolation. Both terms impact modern dating and society in Japan. So now we have explored some of the basics. Here is a question for you to think about. Is sex different for men and women? Okay, I know this sounds a bit strange to ask, but there is a good reason why I inquire. The reason is that during this research, I found one thing to be clear, and that is the services women desire, as well as the hidden emotions behind it, are often very different to that of men. <laughs> Introducing the weeping boy experience for around sixty dollars an hour. A handsome Japanese man will sit with his customer and cry. This can be done by watching a movie or just sitting in the room and crying. This may seem a strange service, but some are making some serious cash. After reading several stories on the subject, I came across a Japanese article that was interviewing a Japanese weeping boy. 
he states that many of his customers were career women around 40 years old and were stressed from their job. So he would go around there and cry with them for an hour. Sounds like a pretty interesting gig, right? He refused to mention if there was any physical intimacy after the crying experience. But I can't imagine you would have anything naughty on your mind after crying, or though they do say that after crying you feel a sense of emotional release. So maybe it's the best time. Who knows? A warm greeting in Tokyo. Nadoka is meeting a man twice her age. But they are not friends, nor is it a date. Takanobu Nishimoto is a man for rent, and it's all above board. The next popular service is the Sheep Boy Experience. The Sheep Boy Experience is normally around $120 an hour. The man will cook, cuddle, and sleep next to his customer. Think of this like a partner without the hassle. There are short-term packages as well as overnight packages which include added extras, if you know what I mean, wink wink, and can cost over $1,000 for a night. Nice, good choice, good choice, good choice. I heard him say like, they both like each other, but they don't know that they like oh, okay, each other. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, senpai, Senpai, what are you doing? Eh, the next experience is the Japanese Boys Love Cafe. This is where things get a little more, um, let's say, unique. But picture a cafe with the theme of a school. Now you as a customer would go in and you would have the role of a student. The concept is that the workers take the role of other students who are in love with each other. There is no intimacy per se. But a lot of suggestive interactions are going on, such as both workers having a little nibble of a cookie or something similar. Most of the customers are women and find this very attractive. Are you still with me? Okay, good. Moving on to the host clubs. Hi, hi. These are by far the most talked about entertainment for women who are looking for a good time. Host clubs are men who cater to the needs of Japanese women. Normally, this revolves around talking to the customer, pouring drinks, and having a good time. Legally, workers and customers are not allowed to conduct sexual activity in the establishment, however, swapping contact details and going to a nearby love hotel can happen. There are even foreigners who try their hand at working at a host club. It must be said that, in general, Japan is not the most foreign-friendly country. Some host bars won't allow foreigners to enter and most definitely won't allow foreigners to work in the bar, but there are some that do. As you can imagine, it's sadly not all sunshine and roses. The hosts often must drink every day, which can soon take a toll. Some hosts have reported forcing themselves to be sick in order to avoid damage from the booze. Nevertheless, the demand is high. An interviewer spoke to one of the highest paid Japanese hosts who made over $200,000 a night. You may be wondering why this happens and why it's so popular in certain parts of Japan. From watching plenty of interviews, hosts often say that their job is to be more masculine than the average man. But remember, life in Japan is very different. And so masculinity is interpreted differently and not how we often see it in the Western world. So does this mean that all the women of Japan are nymphomaniacs? Not quite. The reason why some women pay crazy amounts of money for these services is that their desire is much deeper than pure physical intimacy. Naturally, there are those women who desire the connection on a deeper level while others prefer the more straightforward services. To be honest, I can see why some of these services are popular. Let's take Tomoka. She is a Japanese woman living and working in Tokyo. She is single, career-driven, 
but finds she needs an emotional release from life. So, she uses services like this to help her through. Women in Japan often face their own dating challenges, and so services like this become an attractive option. I know this may sound surprising, but I truly believe that Japan is ahead of its time and essentially leading the rest of the world. I'm not making a value judgment here. Whether this is good or bad is subjective, but I foresee such services becoming more prevalent globally in the future. Although these services may seem unusual to some, the dating scene is undoubtedly changing. In the Western world, the average man and woman are subjected to immense pressure. The system we're in compels us to prioritize aspects of life that, in the grand scheme of things, aren't critically important. We're obliged to place money, career, and business at the forefront to ensure our survival, while other important emotional needs are put on the back burner. But if your passions lie in business, money, or work, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Nonetheless, a lack of balance often leads to emotional voids. So, with this thought in mind, I believe that services like these, which offer a novel form of connection and intimacy, will become much more common in the future as many people struggle to find balance. But what do you think about all of this? Oh, and by the way, check out this video we published recently. I think you will be surprised what we found out. But nevertheless, thank you so much for sticking around till the end. Stay strong and I'll speak to you in the next one.